What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I break down the stats of each one of the weapons as well as their variants in Infinite Warfare. In today's episode, we're going to be covering one of the most recent guns that was added into the game, and this is the Atlas LMG. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so let's hop into the stats for the base Atlas, and keep in mind everything here is going to be hand tested because there just aren't any stats available online right now. Nobody really seems to be uploading those hard coded stats, so I kind of have to do everything myself, but we've got a damage profile of 3024, which means it's always going to be a 4 to 5 shot kill. Keep in mind though, there's some interesting multipliers that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Our rate of fire with the Atlas is 726 rounds per minute, which just for comparison is almost identical to the K-Bar. Our time to kill is 248 milliseconds within the 4 shot kill range, and 331 milliseconds within the 5 shot kill range. Our aim down sight time is kind of a hybrid between LMGs and assault rifles at 275 milliseconds, so it's not quite as slow as LMGs, but not quite as fast as assault rifles. Our sprint out time matches the LMGs at 300 milliseconds. Our reload time is 2.02 seconds, which is quite fast for LMGs, it's more along the lines of what an assault rifle would be. Our movement speed is standard for LMGs at 90%. Magazine capacity is 46 rounds, and we have a total starting ammo, including the magazine and the gun when we spawn, at 92 rounds. Getting into our ranges with the Atlas, as you can see here, we've got a great 4-shot kill potential at right around 30 meters. I think it's actually just above 30 meters for our 4-shot kill potential, which is quite noticeably better than the K-Bar, which is the most comparable gun to the Atlas. With Suppressor, we reduce that range by 25%, and with Rifled Barrel, we increase that range by 20%. Now getting into something that I find very interesting with the Atlas, this is the multipliers. Normally guns just have a headshot multiplier and that's it. The Atlas on the other hand has a head, neck, and upper torso multiplier. So what this means is without hollow points at least, an upper torso shot is going to count for the same amount of damage as a headshot. So what we get is a 1.1 multiplier to the upper torso, neck, and head, and this takes our damage profile to the upper torso, neck, and head, to a 3326. What this means is even if we're hitting in the multiplier region here, we're never going to get a 3 shot kill, but within the normal 5 shot kill range, if we hit just 2 of our shots to the torso and the other 2 can go anywhere in the body, it's going to be a 4 shot kill out to infinity. So the Atlas has a potential infinite 4 shot kill range as long as at least 2 of your bullets are hitting in the upper torso, neck, or the head. And this is actually pretty huge because that upper torso multiplier is relatively big and when we look at the recoil you'll see that you can kind of walk your shot up your target and it's going to be quite common even at those mid to longer ranges that you're going to be hitting two of those shots to either the upper torso neck or the head. This is where the true power really comes in with this gun. As for hollow point, hollow point gives us a standard multiplier. Keep in mind this multiplier won't apply to the upper torso or the neck. This only applies to the head, but we get a multiplier of 1.35, and this takes our headshot damage profile with hollow point to a 40-32. And what this means is within the standard 4-shot kill range, you definitely have the potential to get a 3-shot kill as long as one of those shots hits a headshot. So hollow point is definitely worth it on the Atlas. As for hipfire, this is one of the big downsides to the Atlas. It has the same hipfire potential as the raw, which is the worst in the LMG category. Now one last thing to mention about the base Atlas, it has an alternate fire mode, it's an underbarrel grenade launcher, but it doesn't fire a grenade, it fires a smoke screen. This is what the smoke screen looks like, if you hold your swap weapon button this is how you get to that alternate mode, then when you fire it, it flies in a perfectly straight line, and as it flies, it emits smoke. So you can use this to cover your advances through open areas, just keep in mind it moves relatively quickly so you have to try and keep up with it if you want to take advantage of this. Personally, I find this to be a little bit on the gimmicky side. I haven't really found myself using this super tactically and really gaining an advantage using this, but maybe for some people you can in some situations. And just remember that it is always there to be able to use. So overall, my thoughts on the base Atlas, I would say this is a very solid gun in this game. The recoil is quite high, so you definitely have to compensate for that a little bit. You really have to pull down with your aim to counteract that recoil, but then again, it is pretty much vertical recoil, so it's relatively easy to compensate for. And even though it has some of the LMG handling characteristics, like a slower sprint out time, and kind of a hybrid between assault rifle and LMG aim down sight time, I would say this gun is actually quite competitive with something like the K-Bar. It has almost exactly the same time to kill properties as the K-Bar, 
but it has a longer four shot kill range also with the ability to have an infinite four shot kill range if you hit that upper torso multiplier and it also never drops off to a six shot kill like the k-bar does so in a lot of ways it's actually better than a k-bar which is generally regarded as one of the top tier weapons in the game so the atlas is absolutely a very powerful gun i wouldn't go so far as to say that it's better than the k-bar because it does have its downsides but it's definitely up there as one of the guns that has the potential to be top tier. And now that we've covered the base stats for the Atlas, let's get into the variants. And we're going to kick it off with the common variant called the Smoke Screen. The Smoke Screen just gives you Steady, which gives you a 20% reduction to your hip fire spread. So this gun is pretty much identical to the base, but you get slightly better hip spread. As for the rare variant, this one is called the Vanquisher. It gives you On Point, which speeds up your aiming, but that comes at a cost of reduced hip fire accuracy. And we also get Readiness, which allows you to reload faster when your magazine is low. This one is a great variant. It's got a couple perks that are going to be helping you quite often, but just make sure you don't hip fire at all with this because it's got one of the worst hip fire spreads in the entire game. Moving on to the Legendary variant, this is called the Overwatch. And with this one, we get a brand new weapon perk called Tech Savvy. And with Tech Savvy, you get Engineer when you're crouched, prone, or when you're standing still for a period of time. It doesn't kick in immediately as soon as you stop moving. It does take a little bit of time, but once it kicks in, you'll be able to see that enemy equipment through walls. In addition to this, we get stability, which gives us that 3% reduction to our view kick, which is quite nice. Every little bit helps with this gun since it does have such high view kick in the first place. So finally, let's move on to the epic variant of the Atlas. This is called the Artifice. This one has improved smoke kit as well as stockpile, but there's something else that isn't even listed on this, this gun is now a three round burst rather than a full auto. Now with this three round burst, it definitely has more of a delay between the bursts compared to the R3K, so it doesn't shoot as fast as the R3K, but its one burst kill potential is ridiculous. We're looking at more than 50 meters for its one burst kill potential. So in almost any line of sight that you find, as long as you can hit all three bullets in a burst, you have the potential to get a one burst kill. Now, I'm not too sure how the multipliers are affecting things here. I don't know if it has that same upper chest multiplier. It's almost impossible to test this through hand testing because there is a little bit of recoil within each burst and you don't really have that much control over where every single one of the bullets goes. But just keep in mind, you definitely have an insane one burst kill potential with this gun. As for the other little perks with this gun, first off we get improved smoke kit, which causes your smoke drone to move slower and last longer. And this is actually very noticeable. This makes it so it's much more viable to use in a situation. You can fire that smoke drone and you can actually keep up with it on foot. You can just run behind it and use that for cover to your advantage. Whereas without this improved smoke kit, oftentimes it's so hard to even keep up with it that it's gone before it can even do anything for you. So it's definitely improved on this one. And also it gives you a built-in sight by default. This is a variable zoom sight as you can see here. I'm not really a huge fan of it. If I had this variant, I would definitely just be using something like an ELO site. But for those of you guys that like the looks of this site, you can definitely use that. And we also get Stockpile, which increases our total magazine capacity to 54 rounds. And that means our total starting ammo, including the magazine that we spawned with, is going to be up to 108 rounds. I want to give a big thank you to Jorivi. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I butchered your name there, but he gave me a hand with this. I don't actually have this variant myself, so he gave me a hand doing the testing on this. He does have a YouTube channel link below, and I'm going to link a video of his. He actually has a solo deatomizer strike with a combat knife, so absolutely insane. If you guys want to go check that out, make sure you click that link after watching this video. And with that, after looking at all of these variants in great detail, I'm going to say my favorite variant of this gun is definitely the Legendary. The one that gives you engineer when you're crouched or you're prone or you're stand still for a couple seconds. That one is excellent, especially due to the fact that you also get stability, which helps a little bit with that pretty high recoil with this gun. And with that, I'd like to know in the comment section below, which is your favorite variant of the Atlas? And what do you think of it overall? Do you think it actually competes with the K-Bar or do you have a hard time overall handling it? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.